ready? Sir, we'll wait for some time. We'll let others to join the call. Sure, sure, sure. And then we can start. Yeah. Uh, I'm audible clearly? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, thank you, sir. So let me give a quick introduction to everybody who has joined the call. Uh, this is Shalendra Singh from Yuktesh Technologies. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, soil nutrient and water management in pomegranate. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sudi is there. He is a uh, he is a soil nutrition water management expert. He has uh, said I will give give it to you to do the introduction. I am simply yes, setting up the stage. So yeah. it will be really good for others also, if you can yeah. do a very quick and uh, small introduction of yourself so that people can understand that uh, who means uh, you are today leading this, uh, leading this webinar. And uh, I'll finish. So uh, Yuktesh Technologies, everybody uh, here, just for your reference, we are uh, in a very simple step, in very simple statement. We are IoT for agriculture startup. We are based out in Bangalore. What we do is we provide a high touch agronomy advisory using IoT and maths to growers. So what we do is we deploy these devices in the farmer field, which help them to capture the fiscal variables from the field. These fiscal variables can be temperature, humidity, rainfall, how much wind speed is there, how much, what is the direction of wind speed, what is the soil volumetric water content that is very much different from soil tension. Uh, we also measure the soil, uh, we also measure the leaf wetness, we also measure the uh, solar radiation. Uh, using all these things, then we give the advisory to the grower. Now, grower can ask, what kind of advisory you will give me? I know everything. Yes, grower definitely is, is the boss over here. But we help them to take decision backed by this data. So they know in and out of everything, but data can always help them. For example, when you go to a doctor, doctor always measure the temperature of the body using a thermometer, right? Because doctor is present over there. So similarly, this is what we do. So we help grower to, uh, to monitor these variable and then we provide irrigation advisory that how much minutes they should irrigate. We provide them the fertigation advisory that when they should fertigate. We tell them about some of the disease forecast, not all of them, but some of them, because forecasting all the disease is not physically possible. There are hundreds of diseases which happen to the grower. But we tell them few diseases which are very active, that when they when they are going to happen using the weather, weather parameters and what precaution they should take. And the generalized advisory as in the package of practices where uh, Sudhi said is going to talk more in detail. So this will be more like uh, a detailed session in which uh, Sudhi sir will, will, us, will take us through uh, different things, for example, soil, nutrition, some diseases. And then in the, in the end, I'll give some of the case studies where we have deployed this. We'll take the question in the last because if we'll start taking question in between the webinar, it will be very difficult for us to answer each and every question. So what you can do is if you have any question, you can type in the message, we'll try to answer them in the last. Sudhi sir will not take too much time because again, this is a limited webinar. It's more like 45 minutes will, will complete because otherwise uh, everybody here will start uh, losing patience. We as a student, when we sit in the our engineering classrooms, any lecture more than half an hour, everybody starts sleeping. So <laughs> I'm just giving, uh, I'm just setting the stage. So, uh, so Krantesh, can we start? I think whatever people would have joined, they have joined. And this is anyway the recording. So one more request to everybody who has joined that uh, you can you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. There we have published much more videos about different other crop like for pomegranate, for grape, for tomato, for capsicum. You can search on YouTube about Yuktish technology. Subscribe in the uh, in the future. We'll be also doing uh, webinars for the orange, uh, for the uh, for the apple also because we are adding those crop also. So, Sudhi sir, over to you. Yes, sir. Probably okay. You can start with the introduction. I'm so you can start with the introduction, and I'll change the side over. Yeah. Thank you, Shalindra sir. Yes. 
Yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as Shailendra Singh Chauhan was mentioning, myself, uh, I'm R Sudi, Raghavendra Sudi. I'm a retired scientist from an uh, international crop research institute located in Hyderabad. Now I'm associated with this UPIC team for agronomy and crop management uh, advisory group. So with this ba brief background, uh, I would like to discuss and uh, share some of our views on soil, nutrient, and water management in pomegranate uh, in general crop management and very specific to soil, nutrient, and water management. So welcome to our uh, this today's discussion. And also, I'm very uh, thankful to you joining for this discussion. Probably, as uh, Shailendra Sub has mentioned, you can pass on your questionnaires, clarification, or anything through either messages or WhatsApp. And we can have a discussion, one-to-one uh, -one discussion also. And we'll uh, clarify all your doubts. Pomegranate, as you know, I don't have to go to the background that how much area it is grown, why it is grown, where it is grown. Directly, we'll come to the cultivation practices and technical aspect of that. That is soil and climate in this slide, as you see. It can be grown in the wide range of soils, shallow soils, deep soils, loamy soils, heavy soils. But only thing is, it should be provided with a well drainage system. So, soil should be drain, uh, well drained soil should be there. And pH range, about six to eight of pH range, it can be grown. It can tolerate alkalinity and salinity to some extent, but it is very sensitive to soil moisture fluctuation because either under moisture condition or over moisture condition or over watering condition will definitely impact adversely the crop quality, particularly fruit cracking. And the solarization or summer deep plowing always helps in keeping the soil free from the soil borne diseases. In climate, prefers semi-arid dry, uh, semi, uh, semi dry climate, and it can grow in the rainfall region of 500 to 750 millimeter of rainfall, that is semi-arid climate. And also the mean sea level of up to 500 meters, it can be grown. But particularly during fruit development stage, hot and dry climate is required. But it is best under hot, dry summer and cold winter with irrigation facilities. Again, it is related to the sensitivity of the soil moisture fluctuation. Temperature range, it can take up to 35 to 38 degrees Celsius, uh, degrees Celsius which is necessary for its proper fruit, uh, fruit development. It can tolerate low temperatures and sensitive to humidity, and it affects the crop quality, as well as proliferation of diseases, some of the virus diseases, fungal and virus diseases. Landform, particularly, it can be either on flat bed or raised bed system. And pit preparation is at two feet by two feet by two feet is a common in medium soils. Pits are dug about one month prior to the plant planting and it should be kept open for one month so that natural solarization disinfect the soil on diseases. And before planting anything, it should be drenched with 0.15% of the carbonism and 0.2% of the chlorofurifates at four to five liters of what, what uh, this uh, mixture of a spray per pit has to be sprayed at the bottom and the sides of the pits before filling the pit. And we should fill the pit, particularly in the rocky and gravel soils with sand and soil or clay properly mixed. And each pit should be filled with formate manure like what has been given in the screen, you can see that formate manure of 115 kg, vermi compost of 2 kg, neem cake of 1.5 kg, trichoderma. Trichoderma is very important because it is a fun, uh, it can take care of fungal diseases and also it's a very good bio fertilizer type. So 25 grams per pit. PSB culture, <coughs> 25 grams because most of our soils have stored enough phosphate, but unfortunately. It is not being available to the crop. To make it available, PSB culture helps in that way. So 25 grams of PSB culture, that is phosphate solubilizing bacteria, <coughs> azotobacter formation, formulation, sodomus formulation, azospirulum formulation. These are the biofertilizer formation. These should be used. 
Uh, sir, uh, just one quick question. In fact, I have a question now here. Yes. This might be helpful for others also. Yes, yes sir. Yes, what sir. is this FYM, sir? <coughs> Which one, sir? FYM. Farm Yard Manure. Farm Yard Manure. Farm, F-A-R-M, Farm Yard Manure. Okay, that is the manure that... Uh, oh, but, farmer... uh, generally, farmer, what they do is, most of the dung and crop residues and yeah, whatever they waste in the home, mm -hmm. they put in a pit near to their house or near to the farm, mm -hmm. allow it for the decomposition for the about six months or seven months, mm -hmm. then they take it to the farm to apply. This is called farm yard manure. 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 And sir, yes. other thing what you have mentioned, trichoderma, formulation, yeah. phosphate, these all are available with the local vendors. Actually, these are available with the university uh, KVKs or universities, particularly in GKVK, they have a organic uh, lab, organic fertilizer lab. Mm -hmm. They produce uh, well beforehand. And also most of these things are available with the department, government department. Mm -hmm. That is in Karnataka, they call it as a, uh, uh, some government uh, department will supply along with these uh, fertilizers. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead, sir. Yes, yes, just and also commercially it's available with uh, some of the companies but uh, cost maybe i don't know they charge a little high but if you procure it from the university it is quite cheaper so I'm next just... slide yeah yes. next yeah and some of the promising varieties of pomegranate as you all know and most of the farmers they are already growing it bhagwa kesar sindur mridula g137 ruby they are all with a different characteristic with the color in shape and size and also taste. So that has to be selected, which is suitable for the particular region. For example, Maharashtra region, Bhagwa may be very much suitable. Even Maharashtra attached with the Karnataka, Bijapur and Bagalkot, Kesar, Bhagwa, Sindhu is quite good. So it, uh, there are different characteristic processes that has to be looked into. So if somebody is interested, we can go in detail about that one again, once again. And this uh, pomegranate cultivation, we have to go for some intercrops. We can go for some intercrops like legume crops, particularly cowpea, horse gram, vegetable peas, onions, which can give some additional income until the main crop grows to the higher level uh, height. Because this crop adds to the economy of the farmer and also it adds to the soil nutrition. That is a, uh, again uh, enrich nitrogen rich crops. Yeah, this is this is very interesting. As per our last discussion, suppose you are doing these some of the yeah. intercrops, uh, can disease transfer yeah. from those intercrops to these pomegranate? Is there any possibility, or those intercrop will help to increase the uh, nutrient in the soil and remove some of the disease? Because I remember Definitely. you mentioning, yes. Sir. Yes, definitely, sir. Because cowpea, horse gram, and peas, they are all uh, nitrogen-rich legume crops. Nitrogen-rich legume crops. So they add nitrogen to the soil. Not only they do, most of the crops they take, for example, cereal crops, other cereal crops, they take the nitrogen from the soil. But whereas legume crops, they add nitrogen to the soil. So these crop has to be grown in the rainy season, particularly in the rainy season. Is it okay, sir? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's clear. I am just yeah. going to second slide. Yeah. Yeah. The other box I have mentioned, sorghum, maize, and pearl millet in four rows, all around the crops has to be grown as a guard crop or barrier crop. Because some of the viral diseases, that vector is such that through wind it can come to the field. It can affect the main crop. Bullye? Nothing. Somebody nothing, was sir. mentioning something. I think. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Things. Okay. So these crops should be grown as a barrier crop, which can stop the uh, vector movement of the some of the viruses or bacteria as a through disease uh, as a disease. So even we can grow the uh, uh, some of this um, glaricidia crop, which is nut rich in nut uh, nitrogen. And that leaves can be used as a green manure. And also, we should grow some of the green manure crops in the field itself. That is, Sanabu in Kannada, they call it is, jute in English. 
they grow it for 40 days or 45 days they cut it into pieces and blow into the soil that adds nitrogen to the soil what name you can we go to the next? yeah what name you mentioned clericidia right clericidia g l i r i s i d a d i a clericidia so okay sir i am on next slide yeah next slide please as we were mentioning most of the time that the crop is sensitive to the water fluctuation that is underwater application or overwater application that affects the crop so water management is very important but before going to the field water management we will go to the how to improve or develop the water resources for the crop there rainfall is the only source of water resources that is a natural source of water resources whether it's a ground water or soil moisture store, stored soil moisture or reservoir or canal for all these things rain water is very important so because this pomegranate crop we are preferring in the rain semi arid region water is a major constraint for the crops semi arid region we get the rainfall about 5 to 700 mm 500 to 700 mm of rainfall but the crop water requirement is 1500 to 2000 mm of rain uh, water so in that way we mostly either depend on the harvested rain water stored in the pond or structures or 90% of farmers they depend on the ground water Sure. so to sustain the groundwater groundwater recharging structure has to be done and most importantly most of the houses in the villages or in the town uh, substantial quantity of water after using the domestic water goes as a waste water that can be used after simple treatment it can be used reused for the crop productivity next step please so once we have once we develop or improve or conserve the rain water how to use it efficient that comes into picture so watershed based land development that means uh, field bending has to be done wherever it's possible wherever the slope is high we have to put the field bends and uh, good drainage system has to be provided in order to avoid the water logging system rain water rain water harvesting and ground water recharge structure has to be built wherever it's possible if the land uh, if the land parcel is very big he himself farmer himself can go for the farm pond or some of the nala or something some natural drain is running through his field or running by his field he can have some structures like uh, check dams percolation tanks and other things and water management crop water requirement has to be assessed properly then only we have to schedule the irrigation in order to avoid the either under irrigation or over irrigation so the selection crop doesn't come here because this is for the common for, for other crops water harvest structure and groundwater recharge structures like farm ponds check dams gully plugs percolation tanks sunken ponds these can be constructed at farmer level, farmer's field or if the natural rain water is uh, flowing by his field he can construct some of the water harvest structures which can allow the ground water to be recharged just a moment uh, there is somebody uh, i think everybody is able to hear uh, sudhi sudhi sir properly because i am getting the voice properly okay yeah thank you sir please continue somebody Good. mentioned that they are not yeah. Yeah. not able to hear properly now it's okay yeah. I, I can hear you properly. I just cannot yeah. hear you properly. Methods of water application is also important. But anyway, all these methods are gone out now. We can depend on, and that is the only efficient method method of water application. Drip irrigation, particularly drip with plastic mulch, is very important. That has to be kept in mind. So, other way of improving the efficiency of water application is to reduce the evaporation loss. or percolation loss to reduce the evaporation loss we have to go for the plastic mulch or mulching system to reduce the percolation losses we need to apply the farm and manure or vermi compost to hold the retain the moisture for a longer time and good crop management is very important that is taking out the weed or unwanted crops in the field which consumes or extracts nutrients as well as water that has to be taken care how to enhance the water use efficiency that means every drop of water we need to produce more that is called crop per drop 
So scientific approach of water management is very important. As we were mentioning in the introduction itself, that uh, sensor-based data we have to collect, we need to know, we need to analyze whether water is required or not required, depending on the soil condition, depending on the crop phase development, and the type of crop, if it is intercrop, if it is a soil crop. And this has to be calculated. And based on this scientific approach, we should implement the water management system. Yeah. So major parameters affecting the crop water need is, as we discussed earlier, rainfall is the basic one. What is the rainfall? How is the total amount of rainfall? What is the amount of rainfall? How is its distribution? It's a bimodal or mono type of model. June to September it occurs, or it occurs uh, how many dry spells occurs in the rainy season. Those things have to be studied. So that is very important. Rainfall, temperature, that is atmospheric temperature and soil temperature. And sunshine, sunshine hour or duration, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, soil type, soil profile, soil moisture, and crop growth stage. These are the factors which affect crop water needs. So to monitor these things and based, uh, based on these things, uh, input from taking input from these things, we should schedule the irrigation. There is a quantity of water to be applied to the plant and duration of uh, irrigation that has to be worked out. So that is where the advisory comes in picture, the scientific approach. Otherwise, farmer is doing as we should be saying. That means if he has a bore well, he can just use it for water. Overwatering and underwatering, both the scenarios, crop is affected. To get the higher yield per drop of water, we need to have a scientific approach that the data based, sensor based data has to be considered and a meticulously worked out irrigation schedule and fertigation schedule has to be followed. General water requirement of pomegranate liters per day has been worked out by most of the researchers. In the first year, it, is, it, is, it requires about 2 liters to 5 liters. Second year, it requires about 5 liters to 10 liters. Third year, it requires about 50 liters to 20 liters per day per plant or per tree. So, so on fourth year onwards, it increases its consumption like 20 liters to 50 liters. But this is a general recommendation. But we, what we are planning is in our uh, study see, Sensor based or data based data we collect, we analyze what is the plant water requirement by calculating the consumed use of the plant depending on its stage of growth and the climatic factors and the soil moisture stored in the soil. Based on that, we assess the quantity of water to be applied per day per plant. That will be that advisory advisory will be given by our economy and our team. So water requirement during different stages of growth of uh, pomegranate, that is Ambe Bahar and Mrg Bahar and Hasta Bahar. So as I told you that uh, first stage, eight to 10 liters. Second stage, it's a 10 to 15 liters. Third, third stage, it is six to eight liters. So general recommendation of fertilizer and water management are, nutrient management system goes like this, for mad manure or compost, 25 tons per hectare has to be applied at planting time and following subsequent year, it can be 12 and a half tons per hectare. Fertilizer requirement of uh, pomegranate is uh, nitrogen 200 kg per hectare, phosphorus is 100 kg per hectare, potash is 100 kg per hectare. When we calculate it for the optimal plant population area, it comes to nitrogen around 375 grams per plant, phosphorus 200 grams per plant, potash 200 grams per plant. Secondary and micronutrients should be applied because it's a high value crop and directly it affects the crop uh, quality. So this is the general recommendation. Magnesium sulfate of 10 to 15 grams per plant per month. Copper sulfate of 10 grams plant per plant per month. Zinc sulfate 10 grams per plant per month. The, these Recommendations are to be applied to avoid or to prevent bacterial blight. And boron has to be applied one gram per liter spray to control the splitting of stone. Ethyl 
has to be applied 2.5 ml per liter during September first week or higher copying and good quality this one fruits. Irrigation water management, as I mentioned already, that in general, the average comes around the Kharif season during rainy season, 11 liters per plant per day. Rabi season, 12 liters per plant per day. Summer season, 22 liters per plant per day. But per day, that every day's weather parameters and soil condition and crop growth has to be taken and that has well, advisory will be developed and provided to the growers. Drip irrigation is the most desirable for efficient irrigation water management because pomegranate is grown in semi arid tropics and water is a major constraint in the semi arid tropics. To manage the water, drip irrigation is the only way we have to go for that. First six to seven, month, seven months of water management is very crucial as we mentioned repeatedly that uh, crop is sensitive for under what under irrigation and over irrigation. So that has to be taken care. And we should follow a strictly the agronomist recommendation for irrigation or fertilization schedule that will work out based on the weather parameters. Next slide. Any crop for that matter requires 16 essential nutrients, particularly high value crops like pomegranate. These has to be kept in mind. Most of the general recommendations, they concentrate more on NPK and one or two micro or secondary nutrients. But what I suggest is we need to have soil test report. Based on soil test report, if you apply, you can reduce the wastage of fertilizers or applying excess or under application. And also cost of cultivation can be bottom and effective impact on the crop growth can be achieved. So nutrient deficiency, probably our uh, agronomist, when we visit, they can uh, share the these uh, kind of things. It's very difficult to read in, in the screen. Uh, probably we'll uh, come one to one and we'll discuss these things. Okay, sir. Uh, next slide. Yeah. Nutrient management plans. Nutrient management plans are very important. That is uh, integrate and balance nutrient management is very important for the crop, as per the crop requirement. So it is not only economically effective and efficient, it, uh, uh, environmentally also, it helps to sustain the crop productivity. So we were discussing about the integrated nutrient management, that is INM. What is that? Integrated nutrient management is to manage the nutrients optimally through inorganic fertilizers, organic fertilizers, biofertilizers, with regard to its physical, chemical, biological, and hydrochemical property of soil and crop water, crop requirement to enhance the crop productivity. So most of the time, uh, we depend on inorganic fertilizers, not so, not so. Okay. We need to ample, we need to make use of ample use of biofertilizers and organic fertilizers too. Why integrated nutrient management is? Because one is sustainability of the crop, sustainability of the soil, that improves, enhances the soil fertility on long-term basis, and soil health is taken care. And also it brings the economy and efficiency in the world fertilizer use. It improves the soil physical property, chemical property, and biological property of the soil. And nutritionally also, it helps. Because if the soil is deficient in boron or phosphorus, the produce is also will have, will have a deficiency of that particular nutrition. So to have a good quality or nutritional quality of the produce, we need to have an integrated nutrient management system. Next slide. What are the different components of nutrient management system? Is organic fertilizer in the form of fertile, uh, farm yard manure, compost, vermicompost, aerobic composting, because nowadays vermicomposting is very difficult to manage. Aerobic composting is nothing but the same, similar like farm and manure, but only thing is we put some of the microbial culture in that uh, compost feed so that that uh, compost preparation can be speed up. Instead of six months, 10 months, it can be prepared in two months. 
So this also takes care of the solid waste management in the villages and the farm. And green manures is important, as I mentioned, growing legume crops as a intercrop. And crop residue has to be applied as a mulch that can also go into the soil and decomposes and it adds to the soil health and nutrients. So biofertilizers should be used like PSP culture, trichoderma, and there are several things, azotobacterial, several things. So biofertilizers has to be incorporated in. Along with that, appropriate quantity of inorganic fertilizer, that NPK, whatever has been suggested, that has to be applied to sustain the soil health. Along with that, suitable variety has to be selected with the legume, as I was mentioning, the legume green manures, that the legume crops has to be in, incorporated it as an intercrop, and appropriate soil and water management has to be taken care. Again, general recommendation for menu and fertilizer requirement of uh, pomegranate is age wise, first one month to 18 months, 20 kilograms of uh, farm air manure or any manure, ages per tree. Nitrogen is 375 uh, grams per tree, phosphorus is 200 grams per tree, potash is 200 grams per tree. So, likewise, uh, one and a half to two years two to three years, three to four years, four to five years, and above five years has been given in the table form. We will share this one directly through our agronomist. Or should I read it, sir? Any audience? No, sir, I think what, what, what we can do is we can share this presentation in the group. So everybody yeah. will have this. Yeah. And uh, anyway, just uh, reading the numerical doesn't help you. Yes, them. right, right. Not remember, probably we'll share this in a hard copy, sir. Right, sir. Next. I am, uh, yes. Sir. Anything, sir? Can you move to the next uh, slide? Yeah. This is an example of fertigation schedule worked out. Uh, it's a courtesy again to Jain Irrigation. So, what is the nitrogen should be given per gram per tree, depending on the days after planting that has been given. So this also will share through hard copy. Some of the major diseases will go directly to the major diseases and their control measures. Yeah. Okay. So major diseases and control measures, uh, uh, I'm going to share with you. Bacterial leaf and nodal blight is one of the major disease for this pomegranate. For that, planting material has to be screened properly and it should be disease free. And in case if you find this blight free borodex mixture of 1% with streptocycline 0.025% in combination with copper oxychloride or carbon dioxide. This should be sprayed at 15 days interval for five to six times starting from leaf initiation stage. And also cut the ends. The cut ends should be pasted with borodex at 10% chemical and we should strictly adopt the orchard sanitation or hygiene. Another disease is anthracnose and the leaf spot, fruit spot. We should uh, spray carbon dism 0.15% or manco 0.25% or copper oxychloride 0.25% before plucking fruit. Fruit rot is another major disease we find here with the pomegranate. For that, we have to spray crop with carbonism 0.15% and manco, manco, mancos 2.25% or copper oxychloride 0.25% before plucking the floor. And internal breakdown of aerials stem type. Harvest the fruits at the right time and avoid excess irrigation. Again, water management comes in picture here. Excess irrigation is also affecting the crop productivity. Some of the symptoms have been shown in pictorially here. This also will share with the hard, uh, share with our audience or farmers with a hard copy later on. Yes. Major insects, uh, insects are pomegranate butterfly, reaping flow, thrips, shoot hole borer, pomegranate aphid, mealybugs. 
for that again we'll share these things as a hard copy uh, instead of reading these probably you'll not be able to remember right sir right very right sir. the approach what uh, what i was trying to show was uh, only the approach not necessarily that uh, word to word we need not to read here we'll share this hard copy yes sir. we'll share the presentation in the group yeah, yeah. eco friendly integrated pest management is another option to reduce the cost on pesticides and also to provide protect the environment so neem oil spray has to be incorporated npv virus npv also can control the helicopter form in the intercrops if you are growing the intercrops of legumes or anything plant origin pesticide that the bio pesticides has to be used natural birds has to be attracted to take care of the bird process that's a birds also feed on the some of the pests or insects ferment traps should be kept in the field to monitor the pest and uh, pest attack these are the some of the natural eco friendly system of integrated pest management what is this yeah one, one question i am asking on others here what is shaking plant sir yeah this uh, doesn't come uh, this is not applicable for the pomegranate in some of the plants like a tuber the big plants as soon as you see some of the larvae you can shake the plant so all the some larvae will drop down that has to be taken out and burnt so that is the one way of uh, protecting the field from the insects so plant some of the plants will be shaken and uh, that larvae will fall down on the ground we have to put a some tarpaulin or some polythene polythene sheet on the ground collect those things and burn them so that takes care of the in, these are things should be applied in the initial stage of the pest attack once the pest attack goes beyond threshold level then we have to go for the pesticide but what happens is generally farmers mentality they apply the pesticides based on the calendar system oh this is the month when pests will be coming we have to apply this much of pesticide that increases the cost of cultivation spoils the environment and also harms the health so that is the reason we have to incorporate eco friendly pest management system okay sir this is the precaution uh, slide in front of me yeah. yeah some of the precaution what we need to take is orchard hygiene is very important to prevent the disease and pests you have to remove the prune material from the field and burn them rake the soil periodically in order to make it hello any questions please so, so i think you, you can continue sir i think uh, there was some noise rake the soil periodically adopt drip irrigation drip irrigation is the most efficient way of irrigation because in the semi arid tropics it's very important you have to keep in mind follow the irrigation and the fertigation schedule given by our agronomist that again our agronomist collect the data scientific data from the field we we install the sensors that will be um, we calculate and we advise the farmers on daily basis ensure good any system the field because water logging is going to affect the field so that has to be taken care pit preparation is very important what we discussed earlier that mix, uh, mixture has to be provided if it is a rocky soil or poor soil and again we have to bring some good soil and mixture has to be prepared and applied gently yes. manure has to be applied as per the recommendation select high yielding and suitable varieties for your area disease and pest free and tolerant pest tolerant varieties suitable for the location has to be selected timely field operation is very important like fertilizer application planting time watering weeding intercultivation plant protection measures has to be done on timely otherwise it will damage uh, and goes beyond our economic level apply micro nutrient as and when needed particularly based on the soil test report because most of the times we neglect micro nutrient we think uh, micro nutrient is very small quantity is required but that the micro nutrient application enhances the fertilizer use efficiency of the crop that means even major nutrients are also efficiently adopt uh, uh, yeah urle crop would be apply micro nutrient urle go follow integrated nutrition and pest management system as we discussed earlier 
apply sprays in the evening or early morning only because wind speed is very less and sunshine will not be there. It is going to be very effective if you apply in the evening or early morning. And timely application is very important and it's effective. For fertigation, most of the time we do a lot of mistakes like mixing the solid fertilizers to dissolve together, prepare it, but we should not do that. We should prepare it individually. Individual solution has to be prepared, then mix them and apply it. And do not use fertigation unit for non-soluble fertilizers or manure sometimes. Even we try innovatively our own self. That don't do that. Particularly for sprays and all, while spraying the pesticide, strict norms has to be followed. Like while during the spray, taking break and smoking or eating the pan or sapodi, that has to be avoided. And you should use the mask for the moves. And also wind direction has to be taken care. We should not go against the wind direction, which sprays on our body. So those things have to be keep in, kept in mind while taking up the pesticide spray. Use plastic buckets for preparation of the solution or wooden spoon or wooden uh, stick for mixing the solution. So Gida bits for pomegranate, this is the crop management uh, app, IT based uh, system. It provides high quality personalized recommendation for each crop and for it, it, this device, it uses the sensor data and device, devices data and the software has been developed. That will provide the advisory to the farmers on day-to-day -day basis. Probably any of our colleagues can share this uh, further, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we can. Means we'll... Uh, okay. Case studies, probably the person who has uh, been uh, dealing with the farmers day-to-day -day basis, uh, either they can share or should I go ahead with that? So you can, you can go ahead. I'll pitch in wherever I, I feel that some information is required because I think Kiran is not here. I think Kiran, you are not here in the call. Yeah, he was just in office. He left uh, sometime back in Hyderabad. Okay. To few partners, so. Because I thought that the on-ground agronomists who are involved, probably they are uh, not only this problem, they may be knowing so many other problems. Yes, sir. I will I, I will pitch in, in few locations because I have please. prepared few notes on, on the irrigation side. But uh, please do you please carry on. I have definitely very uh, means few site because we work with other other growers also. Yeah, and other crops also, and uh, and the problem with most of the crop is always similar. So I'll cite some example in the last when you were done. Yeah. So there are some success stories or case studies are also there that we would like to share with you. One of our progressive farmer, Mr. Ashok Patil. He has adopted our sensor-based advisory system for his pomegranate field. He had the three problems he has mentioned. That is, pest and disease management was a difficult because we do not know what is the humidity, how the disease and pest infestation takes place, how it spreads. That was not uh, able to assess visibly. So improper fully replication. Fully replication when has to be taken up. Even if it is applied, it was not proper. And irrigation management, as I was mentioning, irrigation management, we just look at the sky and see that, oh, it's very hot to give some water. It's very cool to reduce some water. So quantity of irrigation was not proper. So improper irrigation management was his problem. These were the problems faced by Ashok Patilji. So disease like bacterial flight, we discussed earlier, weed, fungal disease attack, and many more diseases used to be there for that. Uh, Sensor-based, your uh, data like humidity and temperature is very important. Humidity, temperature, and wind speed. These we are not able to assess properly, and due to that, a lot of uh, quality is lost, and even productivity is also lost. Similar kind of this foliar application, we are not knowing weather condition. Without knowing the weather condition, you just apply that. Next day itself, uh, there could be rain and it washed away or something like that. So it was not effective. Right. Yeah. I think you mentioned in the starting that uh, the, the foliar spray or any kind of spray has to be done either in the morning or in the evening because of yeah. the temperature fluctuations. Right? Because if you are doing that thing in the afternoon, the temperature is too high. The whatever the is wind spray, speed is also high, sir. Yeah, wind speed is also high. So uh, it might evaporate or the, the, or, the plant, yeah, or the plant is not able to absorb properly. Yeah. Right? Or if it is going to rain in the rain in some time, uh, it yeah. might get washed away. Now I think yeah. there are few 
uh, sprays which are available who are yeah. more like not affected by these parameters but yes it's always good to have delta t so this is i think sir tell uh, told with the help of delta t that what is the yes. forecast for tomorrow delta t and in fact, you were totally talking about the wind direction. So in yes, fact, sir. this came as an input from one of the farmer who are into grape, that if they know in their farm how the wind is flowing, from yes, which direction to which direction, they can start from the direction of from the where the wind is flowing because the impact of the spray or the coverage of the spray will be more if they start doing from the wind direction. Whereas if they go opposite the impact, the spray the effect of a spray will not be there. So this is, in yeah. fact, these are the, are the kind of the input which our farmer has told us because they are the one who keep on doing these activities in the field. Yes, sir. So wind, wind direction is very important uh, for spraying as well as for the epidemiology of the disease, spread of disease, spread of diseases. Um, where the vector, the movement of uh, virus or bacteria mm. moves along the wind direction. So that has to be assessed properly. And we should also have the guarding of uh, that border trees or anything. Some measures like that. So in study. my first slide, I was showing that the four rows of either perlimilate or sorghum or mage or glyricidae has to be grown because it protects that wind uh, carry, uh, the disease carried through the wind has, will be protected. This is the next slide, so, important irrigation management. Yeah. So, this uh, impact is disease management. It has shown very good impact, as we were mentioning. Uh, Shailendra Ji was mentioning that what is the temp temperature, what is the humidity, based on that, we can assess the disease spread and the spread of disease, rate of spread of disease, and we can take the appropriate measure in time or on time. So, that has helped him. The spray intervals and cultural management schedules, everything has been calculated by our agronomist and, uh, and given them the advisory that app has helped them to manage it efficiently and effectively. So this is an example where the bacterial blight disease forecasting based on the temperature and humidity. So this slide explains how the temperature varies, how the humidity varies, and based on that, we can assess what is the spread of disease are forecasting of the disease. Fourier spray is very important again. Yeah, this was uh, one slide that, I think that we missed. That is the import, uh, improper irrigation yeah. management. I yeah. think you from the very starting of the presentation are, are focusing yeah. on that, how we can utilize per drop of water or yes. how critical is effective irrigation. So this has been my uh, my understanding, just like last time we were talking to this uh, banana grower. So yeah. it's not about reducing the water, it's about optimizing the use of water. Exactly. We should, we should not of... irrigate more or we should not irrigate less. Because irrigating less or irrigating too more will lead to yeah. the fruit cracking. If you are doing very frequent less irrigation or more irrigation, it will lead to the fruit cracking because of the because of the how the plant how the uh, the fruit is absorbing water. So again, yeah. it shrink, it expand, it shrink and expand. And this is what lead to the crack. Yeah. And I think, uh, sir, just please correct me if I'm wrong, the wilt disease in the in the pomegranate mostly happened because of the excess of water, right? Yes, please. yeah. Excess of water uh, creates the wilt disease and also you know, under irrigation creates the cracking of uh, fruits. Fruits, right. Yes. That's also so this is basically, I think, uh, this is uh, how we have helped them. Just to yeah. That uh, how how everything work. What is the weather forecast? So, sir, I will take a lead, uh, lead lead from lead from here. Yeah. But uh, what we are, as I mentioned in the starting, that what we are doing. So what yeah. we are doing is we are uh, monitoring all these parameter from the farmer field. One yeah. way can be most of the farmer, whomever we talk to, they always say, okay, I yeah. can get this information in the Google. Yes, you can get this information in the Google. Government of India with IMD is doing this thing from last 30, 40 years, right? Yeah. But that is not from your field. That is not something personalized for you. That is not for your farm. That is for your whole city or for your whole block or for your whole village, right? So advisories can be at the district level, 
advisories can be at the block level advisories can be at the village level advisories can be at the farm level and because it's your farm advisories has to be at your farm and it always happened that the efficacy of advisory or how effective is the advisory depend upon where you are monitoring so for example uh, uh, and there are multiple question that come to us for example few, few farmers who are doing uh, this pomegranate cultivation in 20 acre they ask how many number of sensors are required okay how many such devices are required so the answers are clear that few variable don't vary too much in the even 500 meter radius for example rainfall will not vary from every 100 meter every 500 meter it will be mostly same in the area right mostly wind speed and wind direction will remain same if it is not a hilly terrain if there are hills surrounding your area wind speed will be different wind direction will be different as compared to the other side of the hill solar radiation which impact how much amount of water is evaporating from your field or from the plants will mostly remain same right until unless it's very hilly terrain what will change is temperature humidity and soil moisture soil moisture can even change from plot to plot for example somebody is having a 20 acre field now he has divided his field into five part of four acre he turned on a wall four acre get irrigated he turned on the other wall other four acre irrigated right so in that case you need to have one sensor per plot but if all the 20 acre you are irrigating with just one wall then you just need to have only one sensor so how sensors are helping you is sensors are providing you feedback okay that how much you have irrigated when you should leach how at what time you should do the irrigation uh, uh, fertigation and in fact as sir mentioned in the starting that soil testing is very much required what usually happen is that people uh, most of the farmers not everyone progressive farmer usually go for soil soil testing if some agronomists can look at that soil testing result they can tell very precisely what part of the nutrient is missing in the soil testing report and accordingly you can add that specific nutrient to avoid the nutrient deficiency right otherwise most of the farmer simply mix and match and they simply put also basically if you do the soil testing uh, before planting i think this happened before planting you can use water soluble uh, sorry uh, solid fertilizer which is much much more cheaper than the liquid fertilizer because liquid fertilizer are costly right so uh, this way this is not true for grape or pomegranate this is mostly true for tomato capsicum where you uproot the whole plant and you plant it again but yeah so soil testing is always required so what happened what happened over here is how we help uh, ashok uh, ashok patil uh, very specifically as i mentioned the starting that we help him uh, maintain the optimum amount of soil moisture in his field not irrigate more not irrigate less but maintain something between something that is called permanent wilting point yeah. below that root cannot put sufficient although your soil will have soil moisture but your root cannot put sufficient force on those uh, uh, water molecule to absorb them that is called permanent wilting point mm -hmm. and then there is something called field capacity field capacity is the is, is the amount uh, is the is the property of the soil which explain how much amount of water that soil can hold if you put more water the soil the water will simply leach or it will simply seepage will happen right so we tell them if the soil moisture we measure the soil moisture we measure the soil volumetric water how much percentage of water is there because our sensor are different from soil tension meter we use very high quality research grade sensor and which come with almost like three year warranty they are the best sensor best the best sensor available anywhere in the world in fact somebody in fact nasa has used those sensor for testing at their laboratories so they are that high grade sensor they come with three year warranty they are means they are very rugged you put them inside the soil you will not disturb the topography of the soil right you put them you monitor what is the soil volumetric water content if it is going toward permanent wilting point just about 25 percent of the permanent wilting point you should start doing the irrigation then you once you irrigate you can clearly see how the soil moisture is improved <clears throat> as you start doing the field capacity then you can tell them okay right now is the leaching point they leach the leach leach the uh, with the fertigation for five ten minutes and again because leaching will uh, if you start leach uh, start the uh, fertigation before leaching point the spread of the fertigation or the spread of this molecule will be much more around the area right so yeah. 
that is why senses are required means people can say okay i can see means sir last time when we were talking to amol ji patel yes i want plant yeah i wanted to come there as a point sir actually amol ji was mentioning one point the leaching of fertilizer has been prevented through this irrigation system because of sensor he is not either over irrigating or under irrigating because of that he is able to prevent the leaching of fertilizers right and second thing was because he mentioned that because we have problem two sensors he can clearly see that uh, at both the root zones soil moisture was there but from the top because of the high heat or the high temperature he can see okay the whole area is very very dry so usually how farmer irrigate is they see from the top or that okay it seem dry less irrigate and he was irrigating on daily basis whereas that is not even required because your roots are able to absorb water from the soil which is almost like 10 20 cm deep right and the soil volumetric water content is between is very much high above the permanent wilting point so again so this is why sensor is required is nobody is saying that uh, we will do magic no it's not magic is just measurement is just mathematics and assisting you with data whatever decisions you are taking we are assisting you with the data so uh, i'll just go forward uh, uh, i think sir has covered i have covered and how we have helped them we have helped Hello. them with sir just wait a minute i'm just going to uh, complete this yes yes please please so uh, basically foliar spray using delta t by measuring the temperature humidity over there we tell them what is the delta t what is the best time to spray and we we even forecast it for them so that they can prepare well in advance that okay next time when they should irrigate when they should spray uh, then basically irrigation management definitely with the help of sensor that we use that okay that that what is the soil moisture over there uh, uh, this is more like a conclusion that business as usual don't work means we have been doing this thing from long back i still remember when i was talking to a, a, a consultant in the southern part of india he was working with tribal farmer and he gave me a reference he said okay when you talk to those farmer who are living in the tribal region they say they will put the thumb in their tongue they'll put the tongue out in the open and they will tell how the wind speed is moving what is temperature what is humidity is it going to rain or not but right now that is not the case right it means you can even see how climate change is happening and it is real it's not like that somebody is talking in thin air you can see in southern part of india in the tea state is that much cold in the in the winters that it's is basically uh, the ice is ice forming is happening in the tea state right same thing is happening in maharashtra the amount of water available is less right that basically amount of water so much is less so yeah. you have to use it as sir said very clearly uh, uses of water per drop so you have to utilize every drop of water and uh, it means uh, people can say okay we have sufficient amount of water yes water is there but we are not going to leave Sufficient water for our for our future generation. That is and that is true. So uh, business is not uh, business as usual. Don't work. Uh, scientific approach uh, is definitely the need of the hour. That right now you need to consider uh, scientific data for uh, because of the way of you doing the irrigation. Mechanization is required uh, and uh, cost cutting technology. Integrated weed management, integration weed management, integration uh, pest management. providing uh, proven indigenous technology as sir mentioned that we can have some of the uh, plants intercropping that can help avoid the spray of these uh, virus or these pathogens from other field to your field something that can help as a that can act as a natural green manure something that can help you to increase the nitrogen fixation in the soil so these things are the need of the hour and we are and we are and we are just here to support the way you are doing the uh, farming help you with data and help you to in, to improve the way farming is done right now so you can think you can think as a uh, as sir mentioned in the starting personalized advisory at farm level and i also mentioned that advisory can be at farm level advisories can be at village level advisory can be at uh, uh, district level or block level so with this sensor you can have advisories at your farm level so sir uh, with this we are yeah. done with the presentation some of the workshop that we have done in the yes, in the area some of the sensor that we have deployed and yeah. with this we are done i'll i'll make it open to the uh, to the to the our attendees over here if they have any question they can ask sir is here i am here yeah so one yeah. question uh, one question has came sir yeah uh, that uh, which company moisture meter you are this is our own uh, our own device we are yeah. using sensor and if you want more information you can have my number from the whatsapp group 
they can call me and i can i can share more detail on that but uh, uh, putting those thing here is not possible for me as of now any other question uh, we, uh, the, the the group is open for others dr r k choudhary sir you can unmute yourself and you can ask a question dr r k choudhary ji Yeah, uh, Vinod Choudhary, uh, and uh, I would like to know whether these irrigation techniques and uh, sensor techniques uh, training is available somewhere in India for the uh, farmers and even the technical people consultants. Sir, we usually uh, look uh, now. Is 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 more like a uh, very specific question. So, how we work is we work in cluster. For example, as I mentioned, that Bijapur Bagalkot region, the Sholapur Sangli region, these they are. these is specific uh, belts where the pomegranate farming is happening is happening so we go we do demo over there if you are looking for this kind of uh, sensor based training we don't do training we do we usually do this kind of workshop but if you are a webinar if you are interested in in uh, in, uh, in in basically uh, doing uh, going further in inside this inside technical aspect we can we can definitely plan for another webinar where we can discuss about the iot part the technology part how we are doing irrigation what parameters we are using how we are telling how much liter of water per plant per day so that those all we can discuss in detail but we as a company don't do uh, those technical trainings we usually spread information through these open webinars but if you are interested we can do in info a couple of people because again we are here to spread information we are here to uh, to share information uh with that so thank you for this uh, Uh, it was a part uh, of curiosity because uh, sir your voice is breaking uh, means uh, uh, i just go hello uh, there are a uh, lot many smart uh, farming techniques and other things but uh, actually a uh, practical point of view farmers are not able to adopt this and uh, day by day all these uh, productivity is going down though the information is available that is what the concern is so there should be practical training at least at a state level somewhere sir i think yeah means i i, I can definitely add some point over here uh, sudhi sir is from the international organization which yeah. whose whose whole uh, aim was to provide this training now training is a very wide thing this training are mostly done by the government organizations like the local yeah. kvks or the local research institute right huh. we as a yes, we yes. as a organization can only do these webinars right i hope you okay. understand the limitation yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but i just uh, I, the question was just if you are having uh, knowledge if uh, some institute is giving training so that i could have gone through so definitely i think if you are in if you are in maharashtra i think there are couple of there are many kvks which do these trainings in in yeah. i know about karnataka sir please go ahead yeah. even bagalkot there is a horticulture college is there sir and sholapur there is a kvk uh, is there icr run kvk is there they they can provide the training and all the required information okay, further okay. i'll inquire sir thank you thank you but in bangalore uh, yeah bangalore gk vikas yeah. mentioned ihr so they have uh -huh. this uh, uh, i think monthly or quarterly trainings keep on happening where you can, can participate okay 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 thank you sir yeah, no problem sir uh, i think thank somebody you. from tree way d was trying to ask some question yeah 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 hello hello yeah yes yeah, sir my my voice is clear na yes your voice is clear okay yeah i i no, i am clear. Uh, i am basically a agriculture student i i am doing my master degree from anand agriculture university anand gujarat and uh, my research is on pomegranate actually you just mentioned about the uh, soil meter right soil moisture meter but the actual condition yeah. of the active root system or whatever we we called it rhizosphere right the the moisture percentage yeah. or or the anything with the moisture percentage is directly dependent up, uh, dependent on the active microbial system of that root particular jet. area right. okay 3 3 ft yeah. or 4 ft and with your equipment and whatever the equipment you just mentioned can we can we do the exact moisture level permanent building point you just mentioned i am learning permanent building point field capacity right that tensiometer capillary water minus 15 bar 300 yeah. and minus yeah. 300 minus 31 bar okay 
1.33 bar is a uh-huh. yeah, 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 yeah. There, there are, there are so much definition about the soil moisture and soil moisture formula. But the farmer yeah. is not getting the actual condition by using that formula. If there. If your equipment is that much capable to maintain the moisture of that particular isosphere, can you just explain me? Yes, I can. I can. I can tell you. So look, uh, probably uh, this is uh, yeah. look. We have been working with lot of farmers, and when we talk to farmer, farmer don't to be very frank. Until unless they are progressive farmer, farmer don't bother about uh, uh, what is the exact how the graph is growing, what is the daily variation. what they bother about is what they should be doing in a specific day they are definitely few progressive farmer who will like to know what is the eto how much water is evaporating what is the uh, uh, crop coefficient what is the soil moisture what is the weather forecast but most of the farmer are bothered about okay today what i should be doing so as per the sensor accuracy this is the most accurate sensor that you can get anywhere right if you want to talk more in detail exactly. about uh, more talk more in detail about the sensor quality how it happened probably we can do another workshop in fact you can go to our youtube channel you can have a look uh, last year i have done a workshop on the iot application in agriculture there i have talked in deep about how how you do the measurement coming to the other point whenever you are doing the monitoring even though when you are research research uh, doing research in your college if your professor tell you that he has to develop a new disease forecasting model you will always start with a set of area you will say okay i am covering this one hectare i will have these many sensing point i'll go to i'll uh, divide this 100 one hectare into 100 100 different plots i'll identify one plant in every uh, one plot i'll go and i'll observe that so sensor tell you the normalized behavior what is happening in your field you can go more granular but it's always a approximation of what is happening in your field but as per the sensor quality yes it tell you the exact soil moisture percentage in your field okay sir how much it will cost to the farmer and that from, those from, uh, no do, those detail probably as i told that you can uh, drop us a email you have my number you can call me at least not advisable to share those costing over there right okay because, because there are multiple variables uh, in yeah, yeah. that soil moisture is just one of the content so if you want more detail please feel free to call me you have my number you are i think you are the part of the whatsapp group also you can take my number from there you can send us a email on our support email id okay and we can discuss okay. in detail about the cost okay. can i come in for a moment yes sir yes sir please please yeah as rightly he said it is a wonderful quality it's a world class quality of sensor which can measure the soil moisture fluctuation or the dynamics of soil moisture which is happening with respect to the climatic factors or with respect to the rhizobium development or root development as you are mentioning it does have, uh, exactly it gives the most accurate moisture data but to assess and advise the irrigation amount and frequency or interval we need to have the upper limit and lower limit that is wilting point and the field capacity based on this this moisture data we take and that gives you advisory advice will be developed based on this one so basically this is most precise and uh, uh, accurate uh, sensor which can give a very accurate data very effective one called mahant ji sir can you please unmute yourself and ask your question yes sir yes sir uh, sir uh, this is mahant from bangalore yeah Uh, sir how to maintain a soil ph if our soil ph is very less uh, how we can get increase the soil ph and what is the main importance of a soil ph can you please explain yeah that the soil ph you want to measure uh, you need to know whether it's alkali soil or sal- uh, saline soil then depending on that uh, either soil amendments has to be used like uh, gypsum gypsum is a one of the industrial waste and crop uh, industrial residue that has, that that has to be applied depending on the soil test report and okay. also you should incorporate lot of uh, manure organic manure to bring it to the normal and okay. it is very yeah, it's very acidic then you have to ap- have them approach like uh, drenching of soil and other things there are several ways are there reclamation of a, soil yeah, i think it's a basic chemistry question if i am if i am right yeah. that right. if the soil is acidic you add more yeah. base yeah. To, neutral, yeah. to make it neutral right yeah, it depends exactly. upon the crop requirement also if the yeah. if the crop the soil need to be more acidic then you should add some com- uh, some component that add the acid part in that yeah right? or basically if it is more like more basic then you should again it's more like yeah. 
what the crop need, what is the current uh, pH level of the soil, and then you add either acidic component or the basic component to make yes. it to, to what to neutralize this one. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, can I add something in yeah, this please, particular question? Yeah, please, please, please go. Ahead. Yeah, basically, we 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 have we we are taught in our university that the all the trace elements uh, as are available at the pH below seven point zero, and yeah. all the secondary nutrients which are calcium, magnesium, sulfur, and yeah. some some are trace element over there. Uh, yeah. They are available at the pH seven point zero above. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so the soil pH is uh, basically affected in that way. If 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 your pH is less than seven point zero, then calcium, magnesium, sulfur, basically the secondary nutrients cannot be available for the yeah. plant. Okay, yeah, so we have exactly. to maintain. So we have to maintain between six point five to eight point five, yeah. which is which is which is very much important Optimal. for all all the crops in the world. Yes, yeah, that's one thing. Second thing is if you observe certain kind of th such things, in that case. You can go for the foliar application also, not only soil application of micronutrients, secondary nutrients. Yes, right, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that is the option for that. Yeah. I think somebody, uh, somebody, jo uh, Johnny Joyce has mentioned the sensor. For example, pH is placed at one location. It will give data point from that point only, but would go in all different direction. That means. Uh, sir, can you please uh, uh, add some information over? I have the answer, but uh, it would be good to have it come in. So, what, what is the question, sir? What so is the question? The question, yeah, question is that the roots from the tree grow in every direction, but yeah. we are putting sensor only in one location. So, yeah. how uh, how means how uh, you are able to monitor? Yeah. While installing the sensor, we look at the homogeneity of soil. Around that the sensor, around that sensor, that the environment should be almost homogeneity. That means uh, it should not be heterogeneous. Homogeneity means uniformity will be there. So that is the reason it can give the representative data for that area, covering that area. One more thing is that uh, every ev everything is plant or human being are tolerable to a certain extent, right? Exactly. Plus minus one person will not matter. For example, we as a human being can go up to zero degree or uh, can go to 50 degree also. People yeah, that is called homogeneity level, sir. Actually. Yeah, so the range, that range is yeah, called humanity. This question is quite correct that you are putting sensor only in one region, but this is how sensor work. Yeah. That basically... Uh, I think uh, you're not able to hear yourself. I think it's mute. Yes, sir. I think I, I think yeah. sir, I'm done. and uh, probably it's already like seventy-two minutes. So what we can do is, if anybody has any other any other question, I will leaving. I'm leaving our support email ID uh, yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That you can put in put in the question. You are yeah. already in the part of the group. You can put the questions over there also. I'll yeah. put in the many of the people have asked about the presentation. I'll put the presentation in PDF format in the WhatsApp group. You can take it from there. If anybody is interested in these devices or this uh, our this device platform. We can also drop us the email on our support email ID. With this, probably I'll take a close over here. Uh, sir, uh, thanks a lot for your yes. time. I really appreciate that. And thank you, everyone uh, who has participated today in this webinar. Uh, one last request please, you can please join our uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, we are we keep yeah. on publishing these webinars. There are multiple other webinars that we have published. You can you can, you can have a look at them. You can subscribe. And if anything is happening in the future, we'll keep you in. Yeah. So, sir, uh, thank you, Krantesh. Thanks for your time and thanks for your help. Thanks, Anbuth. Thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good night, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone, for the active participation. Thank you. Ed. Thank you very much. Krantesh, you can stop the recording and you can, you can close the meeting. So...